This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Monday, June the 24th, 2019. It's the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. Well, it's probably not his actual birthday, but it's the day we celebrate it. As I mentioned yesterday, it's exactly six months before and after Christmas. And just as Jesus was born on one of the darkest days of the year, when night is at its height, symbolizing the light entering the world of darkness, John is born on one of the longest days of the year, when the daylight is at its height, symbolizing both the source of his mission and the end of his mission. This is one of those deep meditations on time and symbol in which we realize that Jesus is yesterday and today and tomorrow, the origin and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. It's traditional to light bonfires on St. John's Day and to bless them with pomp and circumstance. It's the traditional day to cut divining rods for finding water and to harvest medicinal herbs for drying. In Germany, these Johanniskraut, St. John herbs, are blessed at Mass. St. John's Day is kind of like Halloween in Scandinavia and the Slavic nations, where kids dress as witches and demons and throw straw dolls into the fire to silence evil for another year. Lots of this was, of course, pagan stuff years before it was incorporated into Christianity, and it's retained as a nostalgic rather than an actual rite. Still, that's one of the most amazing parts of Christianity, that Jesus isn't looking to create uniformity. He wants holiness, and holiness is not about stripping away our humanity. It's about perfecting it. Today in 1535, the great siege of Munster ended. That was a crazy month. The short story is that first wave Protestant Christianity was just Catholicism light. It was faith without religion. It failed for a lot of reasons, but the second wave was less faith without religion and more disoriented belief without structure of any sort. And so the Anabaptists believed that everyone spoke directly to the Holy Spirit, and so any impulse they, quote, received was the real deal. And remember, if you profess Jesus and you were baptized, and you were saved as a function of predestination, then nothing you did, good, bad, or in between, could affect whether or not you would go to heaven. In Munster, in Germany, the Anabaptists set up a small chapel and vigorously converted a few folks. Then they pressed for representation on the town council and bullied their way into positions of leadership. And after a year or two, they banished the Catholic bishop and claimed the Holy Spirit wanted to make Munster the city on the hill of the Gospels. They closed the gates, murdered everyone who didn't agree, and then they found themselves besieged by the local prince, who wasn't the best Catholic in the whole wide world, but he could recognize cult lunacy. The siege ended today with the leadership either killing one another or dying at the hands of the prince's army. It freaked out towns all over Europe and made the Anabaptist persona non grata for leadership most everywhere except rural France. So they turned their attention to the newly discovered New World. And slowly the Anabaptists started making their way to the U.S. where they have a stronghold in the so-called Bible Belt of the U.S. under the general name Baptists or as Bible Churches. Today is also the accepted date in 1717 of the founding of the first great Masonic Lodge in London, England. Most Americans know the Freemasons through the Shriners, who operate charitable hospitals and drive funny little cars at parades. And most American Freemasons are far removed from their European origins. Freemasonry was founded to undermine and destroy the Catholic Church. The organization has a dark past and has spent the last 75 years in an epic PR campaign to obfuscate that. The church still firmly teaches that no Catholic may belong to a Masonic Lodge for any reason, and any Mason wishing to become Catholic must renounce his membership in the order. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit CatholicUnderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.